Now once again I've used my priming wash and I'm dropping in Indian yellow into the lower area of this painting. The lower area is going to be the dark area so we need a reasonable depth of yellow and this can take quite a number of layers to build up that depth but we'll drop it in at this depth that you can see initially and then continue to build that up but for the sky we need to just use a small amount of yellow we just want to take off that raw look from the white paper but we certainly don't want the sky to have a green hue when we add our um, subsequent blue washes so bear in mind for the sky use the smallest amount of yellow so it's all about assessing the colour deciding whether once you've put it on whether that's the look you're after and if it's not as long as you've got plenty of water on your your paper you can lift things back off again before it settles now I'm going to integrate this a little bit by putting a little bit of extra water on the paper and bringing some of the blue over the underwashes. Now I'm ready to start adding in the suggestion of trees and green foliage in the background so I need to bring some sap green into my palette. This is a luscious transparent sap green that I love to use. Look how clean and crisp that green is, it's beautiful. So I've mixed my sap green with a little bit of orange just to take off that brightness of the green. Just dropping in a little bit here and there. So we'll continue on doing that and gradually building up but we won't go into this upper area until that's totally dry. Right, so while this area is drying, I've re-wet this upper area and we'll just add a little bit of interest and a bit of depth. And I'm just dropping in these colours and allowing that water to disperse it again. When you want to add pigment to an area that is dry and you've used water and pigment lower down, Start your clear water brush strokes a long way from the demarcation line, from the edge, and then bring them down to that edge. Just gently tease that colour out so it merges. That'll give you a nice soft look. I'm going to continue to drop in varying degrees of pigments, varying colours. just to suggest a bit of interest and a different sort of foliage in the background but once again it is background so remember not too much detail we're just adding suggestions now we'll go on to the last of the backgrounds so it'll come as no surprise to you that our first wash into the, our priming method is Indian yellow. I'm going to work my way around the entire background using quite a dense wash of Indian yellow and I'll build that up. I may end up having two or three pigmented washes to build up the denseness of colour that I'm after. Now you can see that I have built up lovely, a lovely rich depth of yellow underwash at the base of the painting and a lighter yellow underwash at the top. Now I think I explained to you previously this is because I'm going to have rich depths of further colour on top and I want that yellow to really glow through. You'll also notice the uh, just suggestions of leaves that I've put here. This is how at this stage I make allowances for any extra leaves or stems that I'm going to be painting around. Also I'll be lifting colour out and, and adding colour to also give that um, impression of stems and leaves 
that are, that are in the background just emerging out of shadows. Now this is phthalo blue that I'm putting on this area and you see how the yellow is glowing through and it doesn't look like blue at all, it actually looks quite green. What I'm going to do here is, um, if you can imagine, I think I mentioned this in my last video, if you can imagine stained glass and you imagine how um, if you put one colour on top of the other, the very last colour is going to be affected by those underneath. Well that's the exact same process. Now you'll see that I've cut around the leaf, this suggested leaf. In the last few layers I'm going to bring that shadow colour over that leaf. I may even do a little bit of detail in it, I'm, I'm not sure at this stage. But we'll um, let the top area dry and then we'll bring our Payne's Grey Bluish over that area. So you can see that I've continued to build up Payne's Grey Bluish and we've got a lovely rich colour but I want it to go even richer still. But this is a good stage to stop and I've decided that I, now I want to um, integrate the leaves into the background to have them so that they're just merging out into the light, merging into the background and just, just coming out into the light. So what I'm doing is I've uh, primed the area around the leaf, I've added some of my colour to that area and I want that to flow over and onto the leaf. So I'm starting my clear water wash a little bit further out and I'm allowing that colour to flow onto the leaf. And the same at the bottom. We want lost and found edges. And you see how that's flowing onto that, that leaf. I will continue to add maybe a little bit more colour so that the leaf disappears more into the background. I don't want it to sit forward and to compete with our main subject. So you can see how I'm working around the background and I'm allowing some areas to have less pigment than others and I'm working right around some areas that I think are rather nice and look as if they could be something, anything, just something of interest. I love the way the water allows the pigment to move and spread and blend beautifully. I think I might just suggest there's something right way in the background on this side too. Think about how things would be in nature. Now this leaf is going underneath this upper leaf so therefore we would have a little bit of a shadow over the edge of that. So let's put that in. Just dabbing it in gently. So you can just see how that is just emerging out of the background, how there's just suggestions of colour which indicate that there is something else, a little bit of mystery in the background. The final three paintings. Notice how the different backgrounds give a totally different look, a different atmosphere, a different feel to each of the paintings. When I'm painting, more often than not I'll paint the background last, but if if you feel more comfortable with painting it first, by all means do that. Often with detail studies, we I spend a long, long time developing the study and developing the flower, and then we get to the end, to the background, which is a little bit more haphazard, and often you have a lot less control over the background. So if you feel more comfortable with doing the background before you've spent all the time on doing the detail of your study, go ahead and do that.